Hi everyone and welcome back to Clean Eating Kitchen. I'm Carrie and this is my channel where I share easy and healthy recipes and tips. And now I'm doing a focus on healthy aging, aging better, recovery from chronic illness, all of those good things. So please be sure to like and subscribe if you want more of this type of topic. So I want to show you, um, Alan and I went to the farmer's market today and um, we also went to Whole Foods, but I wanted to show you some of the different items that we got. And this is to kind of kickstart the week. Um, we're at the weekend now. But I just thought I would show you, um, we're very lucky. We live in um, on the central coast of California and it's a very rich agricultural area. So we have uh, just lots of local farmers and I would encourage you to try to find a local farmer's market in your area, especially in the spring and summertime when there should be local things available. So I picked up some shiitake mushrooms and I got inspired. I'm going to try to do a stir fry this week. I just got inspired. I saw um, somebody um, was making, I was watching a video and somebody else was making one and I thought that would be um, a really good meal to make. And so I got some rice. I got this teriyaki sauce at Whole Foods, and I thought that would be good on the on the stir fry. And I got some rice that was on sale at Whole Foods. And usually with these types of items, I'll try to find them with a discount at a store like Vitacost. I don't have a Thrive Market membership right now, but online stores like that you can usually find them at a better price than Whole Foods but you know when you want something of course you just have to get it where you can. I also wanted to point out we are very lucky we have a local farmer or I should say a local I don't know what you call it ranch Hearst Ranch and they make they they rear all the cattle on the ranch and then several Whole Foods stores around California sell their grass-fed meats and so that's another thing I would encourage you to look for it's a hundred percent grass-fed and grass-finished cattle or beef if you eat red meat because that's really the healthiest kind and it's the best for the animals they're not fattened up with grains they are just eating grass this is a little treat I don't know if I've mentioned this in the past there's another farm stand in our area it's called Mount Olive and I, I put these on salads and it just makes the salad incredible and they also make this olive oil which is unfiltered which I cannot find unfiltered olive oil at any store but when you have unfiltered olive oil you're getting all those antioxidants and polyphenols that come from the olives and it just makes olive oil such a healthy food to have in your diet and I use it to make homemade salad dressings I got some grass for my cat and um, that's pretty much it. Just some, some organic potatoes, some organic oranges. They did not have my Cara Carl oranges. I think they're going out of season. So these are Valencia. Um, and that's about it. Oh, I did get some baby bok choy, um, which I'm going to put in the stir fry as well. This is what it looks like. It's a cruciferous vegetable. The baby ones are a lot more tender than the really large ones. And, oh, and then I also, I'm really into these microgreens. I thought this was so funny because at Costco, they sell this, and it's about five times the size. Look how thin it is. I, I saw it marketed like this, and then when I picked it up, I realized, oh, it's not anywhere close to the Costco size. So I'm probably going to go back to Costco this week and get some more of that and some other things. So that is a little haul to kick off the week. I want to run you through how I make a stir fry. To make it really easy, I chop up a whole bunch of vegetables. In this case, I used the ones from the farmer's market. And I ended up with about, I would say, three cups of chopped vegetables, maybe even four cups. And this is kind of part of a meal prepping or planning for the week. This stir fry ended up being about three nights worth of meals for my husband and myself and I served it in different ways over the different nights to make it appetizing so we didn't get bored. For instance, one night I served it with rice, one night I served it with um, potatoes and then you can also kind of mix it up with different sauces and things. So 
what I like to do is just saute the vegetables in a little bit of oil and then I put them in the bowl to set aside while I cook the meat and of course you could cook any type of protein with your veggies. You could do tofu, you could do chicken. I had originally I was going to use chicken but then I got this steak and it ended up being a little bit tough so I think maybe because it was grass fed or it was just a cut that wasn't super tender so next time I'm going to cook that particular cut of meat in the crock pot but um, I did cut the meat up in little pieces so it cooked quickly and then add the veggies back in so it really only takes about 15 minutes and um, oh, I also decided to make some zucchini bread, which is definitely not a traditional side dish for a stir fry, but I have a neighbor who he is so friendly and nice and he's already harvesting a ton of zucchini. So every time I walk by his house, he's giving me zucchini. So I did make some zucchini bread and I'll put the recipe link in the description box because it is a gluten-free zucchini bread that I've made many times and it's really delicious. I wanted to give you a little update on our gardening adventures. So far we have two sun gold cherry tomato plants that are growing like crazy. I am so happy. I was a little worried that it wouldn't be warm enough where they are and it has been a little bit chilly where I live um, but they're doing great. They seem to be growing about one to two inches a day so I can't wait for that and then we also decided to get a passion flower vine. I love passion fruit. I hope that Again, it's warm enough where we live on the coast of um, California, the California Central Coast. We get a lot of fog in the summer. It doesn't really get too hot ever. So we'll just keep our fingers crossed that that passion flower vine does okay. And then also just as part of some fun adventures from this week, Alan and I went for a hike, uh, which we don't do enough, I'll say. And now that we're getting into summer, we will have to be, of course, careful about it getting a little warm inland or um, a little bit north of where we live. It does get warmer. In this case, it was about 63 degrees. It was pretty sunny, so we were tired by the end, but it was such a lovely just hour of our day. And um, so I highly recommend getting out, getting into nature as often as possible. And I really think for Alan and myself, part of aging well is being active every day. And the only thing that really keeps me from exercising is if I have a migraine, which really <laughs> makes it impossible. But even then I'll try to do some stretching. But that's really the only thing that keeps me from being active about an hour a day. And the same with Alan, unless he has back pain or he's just feeling really off, which fortunately doesn't happen very often. And we do stay really active and I think it just keeps us feeling good mentally and physically. And it doesn't have to be crazy. I know I grew up thinking that exercise was full intensity, sweating, crazy cardio. And at this point, really just being moving your body for about an hour a day. And maybe not even that much. If you're just getting started, you can start with even 10 minutes. And there is a great YouTube channel. I'm going to link it in the description box. I've mentioned this channel before. It's called Senior Fitness with Lauren, and it's excellent. And it's not just for seniors. I'm not a senior, and I love her videos. And she's just it's just perfect. It's really great if you have any chronic health conditions. She has all different kinds of videos, and so I'll link that. Hey everyone, I just wanted to thank you for all the kind comments we've gotten since Alan has started appearing in my videos. I think this is the third video now that Alan has appeared and you have been so kind and welcoming and I really appreciate that. I want to say thank you. I also want to say if we're not for you, that's fine as well. I've gotten a few unsubscribes as well and I totally get it. Um, I watch a lot of different YouTube videos and I know just speaking from personal experience I watch some younger creators and sometimes they say pretty crazy stuff that I just roll my eyes but that's kind of what you have to do these days you know if something doesn't work for you you just let it slide or you just move on to the next 
creator or video, you don't necessarily have to make a mean or unkind comment. And thankfully, that has not happened. And I really appreciate that. In addition to the kind comments, it's really made both Alan and me feel really good. And so thank you for that. And I wanted to address now with Alan, um, because we got a question, which I thought was a really good question and keep the questions coming. We love answering them. But somebody asked, um, because I have a background in nutrition, somebody wanted to know if I inspired Alan to become interested in taking care of himself or if that was something that he was interested on his own. And I think the question was in relation to if you have a partner or a husband who's not interested in like eating healthfully and taking care of themselves or, or and, um, like having a focus on healthy aging, how do you handle that? Um, and so I'm gonna let Alan discuss some of his history and maybe you can give some ideas for maybe other older people who just aren't don't feel inspired to do that. Well, many, many years ago, uh, I was a smoker, a, a very heavy smoker. And I tried to quit several times. Uh, the only way I was actually able to quit was I was in a minor auto accident, spent two days in the hospital and had to have some surgery on my nose. And during that time, I was fortunately unable to smoke. That was enough of a break so I could quit. However, uh, as I'm sure many people understand, when you quit smoking, you usually start to gain weight, and I did. So um, gaining weight, I decided to make an effort to lose that weight, <clears throat> and in the process, I learned how to eat better. Uh, I and just, this was way before we met. Yes, this was long before I met. This is when dinosaurs roamed the earth. Uh, so uh, I began to uh, look at different diet programs, and I found one that made the most sense, which was practical and relatively easy to follow. And prior to that time, I hadn't spent a lot of time thinking about you are what you eat, which is a very, very true and accurate phrase. So I began to monitor what I ate. I ate more nutritionally dense, lower calorie type foods, cut back on a number of things that I never thought about eating as contributing to my, my weight. And that set me on the path to be more fit. I also began to exercise back in the day in the aerobics class where there was a lot of jumping and yelling and kicking. And so that combined with the way I changed my uh, eating uh, habits contributed to weight loss, better fitness, more energy, uh, and an overall youthful appearance. <laughs> and then I would say when Alan and I met, neither one of us were really... It wasn't just a big focus. It was just kind of on the side. And, and so Alan had these reasonably good habits. But then when we met, we started eating out a lot and things like that. And that was before I was interested in nutrition or had any kind of training whatsoever. So maybe I'll tell that story in, in, in the future video of kind of more of my journey, especially for people who are new to the channel and don't know it. Yeah, so on the point of eating out... Uh one, I think, really important point I'd like to make, and I'm sure most of you realize this, that when you go to a restaurant, their responsibility, unless it's their stated goal, is not to serve healthy food. Their goal is to serve tasty food. Tasty food is usually salt, excessive salt, sugar, and fat, and the wrong kinds of fat. So if you eat out a lot, and I know people are really busy and it's hard to prepare food at home, and this is Carrie's area of expertise, not mine. But if you do eat out a lot, it's going to add weight and it's going to deteriorate your health, especially over the long term. So I just wanted to throw that in. Uh, we don't eat out that much, and I think that's a big contributor to our health. Yeah, and maybe I was just thinking of future video that might be of interest, you can let me know in the comments, would be how I prepare healthy meals, especially for two people, um, because that can be challenging. And I have some, I think, some tips and appliances, um, like I have a mini instant pot versus the big one, stuff like that. So let me know if you're interested in that. And then just one more point, if do you have any advice for other couples, maybe where the um, one partner is just maybe not interested in health. How do you 
how do you kind of inspire that person? Well, uh, as a sort of an overview, at 82, I consistently notice that in long-term relationships where the couples are middle-aged and older, is that the wife is active, generally has more energy, is often uh, a little more fit, maybe because she goes to exercise classes and the husbands don't. But I think the husbands tend to be a little bit, uh, or maybe a lot, uh, less careful in what they eat. They might drink too much beer. They might, might eat out too much burgers and fries. Uh, and the wives tend to be a little bit more thoughtful about their appearance. And when you get to be my age, I'm 82, obviously, as we mentioned before, but when you get to be older, all of that stuff sort of, it, it you know, it is like an upside down pyramid. It really catches up with you. You have all that extra weight. So uh, if the wife can point out to the husband, hey, look, you know, when I'm older, when we're both older, um, you know, and I'm active and you're not, that's going to cause some real problems for us. And I'm going to be dragging you around. You know, you're going to be on a walker, uh, you know, or, or in a wheelchair. And I'm going to be out there, oh, with the girls going on trips, having fun at the day, day center, woo, 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 going swimming. And, you, and you're going to be sitting here on the sofa drooling on your shoes. So, you know, take care of yourself there, little hubby. That's all I have to say. Okay, and I think that wraps up the video for this week. I, Alan and I are already planning another video with some more of our summer adventures. So please subscribe and like the video. Leave any comments of any other topics you'd like us to address. You know, this is still my channel, but I'm having a lot of fun sharing it with Alan. And he's having fun sharing himself with you and everything, all the wisdom he has and his fun personality. So I hope you're enjoying the videos and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.